Hey everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. So this year I unveiled kind of a new series where I looked at different price tiers, starting to build collections at that designated price amount. And we've done 1,000, we've done 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And today we're gonna to be looking at building a $5,000 watch collection. If you've not seen any of the previous videos, how this works, have different personas that kind of define the collecting philosophy behind an individual. And then based on that persona and style, then develop some recommendations and choices for that individual. Again, the great thing about watches is there's just endless ways to build a collection. Uh, so I'd love to see comments down below about how you would build your collection of $5,000. And before we jump into this, just to kind of make it fun as well, uh, in the description down below, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway kind of sort where if you fill out the form, you go on our website, full authorized dealer of all the brands, 30 brands on our website, pick out five different watches that you would build a $5,000 watch collection for. Then I'm gonna pick a winner at random and then you could choose one of your five watches to be gifted to you for free. So check it out, go in the description down below, fill out the form, include links to all the products that you would add to your collection for $5,000. We would announce the winner on Instagram. You do not need to be following me on Instagram to participate. I wanna kinda of keep this exclusive for just my followers here, but I do have an Instagram giveaway I'm gonna be doing too, so definitely follow me while you're at it. But it should be fun, and I th thought it'd be a cool way to kind of participate, give back a little bit to you guys. Uh, but you guys definitely check it out, teddyballstar.com, full authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, full factory warranty, so if something goes wrong, you're covered, fast and quick fulfillment, price match, so if you see the price for any of these watches at another authorized dealer for less, fill out the form, we'll give you a call. And finally, nine out of every $10 that we generate from the site goes right back into the content we're creating here. But now let's look at these personas. Now for our first persona, we have the check off the boxes collector. So this is the type of collector that needs to have one watch for every scenario, even if one of those scenarios never happens. Persona number two is the one watch collection. So this is the type of person that tries their best to find the one watch that can meet all their needs and finds joy in the simplicity of reaching for the same watch every day. Persona three, the hipster. So this is the type of collector that can't stand having anything mainstream, so they spend the majority of their time picking out different boutique watches and micro brands. Persona number four is the diver fanatic. This collector is fascinated with and only with the world of dive watches. Persona five, the perfect duo. This collector likes simplicity, but can never settle with just one watch, so they opt to go for the balance of a dress in a sports everyday piece. Persona six, we have the formal collector. This individual either needs to dress up in formal attire regularly or just values simplicity. They'll require at least two dress watches to match their many outfits. And then Persona seven, we have the three watch collector. Collection. This collector likes having three perfect watches to cover all their bases, one dress, one every day, and one sports watch. Now to start us off here, looking at the check off the boxes individual, just looking at the types of watches that we're gonna wanna add to the collection. One, we're gonna have a complication watch, then a everyday, more casual style watch. Moving into the dress category, we get, have one that we can have for more formal situations. We'd also look at a more diver style watch, and then finally to round it out, more of a beater style that we can kind of carelessly wear out and about. Now first with our complication, I was thinking about putting a chronograph in here, but I opted to just go with a GMT instead. And that is with the Zinn 105 UTC. So this is a newer release from Zinn this year. I absolutely adore this watch. I think this looks fantastic. If this was a watch that existed years ago, I probably would have added one to my collection. I think it takes a lot of the design attributes that you would find with the Zen 104 and then kind of fuses it together with more of a GMT style watch, of course. Uh, the white dial, I think of this version is the one that I find the most tasteful with that orange GMT hand. It just really comes together to create a very high contrast, high legible, uh, but also very Zen style in terms of what it's going for. Wearability is very solid, 41 millimeters, lug to lug of 47 and a half millimeters, 200 meters of water resistance, and you're getting a top grade Salita SW330 within. And then also on top of it, getting that tegmented bezel with really solid scratch resistance on that. So that's Zinn's kind of proprietary case finishing that is really gonna allow it to take huge beating. Upping the hardness on the Vickers hardness scale to 1200 HV. Moving to the everyday category, I wanna look at Oris with their Big Crown Pro Pilot. Now there's a lot of different watches within the Big Crown family from Oris. I think the Big Crown pointer dates are the ones that are my personal favorites, but I figure this one is a bit more everyday and can, I think, take a little, it's a bit more robust in terms of its looks, and I think leans more in the sporty direction. This is certainly more of a pilot style watch, and it is going to be on the larger side of things. 41 millimeter with its case and a 48.6 millimeter lug to lug, but that dial is going to be quite substantial in terms of its diameter, given that it does have a thinner bezel. You're getting an automatic Salita movement within, 100 meters of water resistance and a sapphire crystal. Pretty straightforward, I think clean, 
it's a, it's a bit more expected from what you would expect and kind of more cookie cutter from a pilot watch. But I think from a versatility standpoint and for somebody that's looking to check off the boxes, I think this is an added benefit. Now from the dress watch category, I think a great place to look is Frederic Constant. So they're a member of the Citizen Group and I think it does get overlooked quite a bit. They're also a brand that you can usually find some pretty good deals on their watches overall. Their prices are a bit all over the place, but I think that lends really well for a consumer out there. And you could really find yourself getting a really high, uh, well-made watch for a reasonable price. The watch here that we're gonna be looking at is their Slimline Automatic, 40 millimeter case, solid thickness. You're getting an automatic Solita movement within, 30 meters of water resistance, sapphire crystal, but very simple, straightforward design. And I think, again, a brand that probably doesn't get as much consideration as they probably should deserve. Value retention is a little bit rough at times with this brand, but certainly a good product that you're getting at the end of the transaction. And then to round us out with a diver and a beater style, I think we can check off both of those boxes with one, which I think really just gives in to the check off the boxes person, checking off two boxes with one is the SRPD-09. This is actually a newer watch that I've been wearing a lot lately. Uh, it basically takes the Save the Ocean style dial that you might have seen with the SRPC-93 and then fuses it into this kind of more gunmetal style case finish that I think really looks solid and just sleek. It looks fantastic with that dial finish. Now this has a 44 millimeter case, but I will say with its 48 millimeter lug to lug distance, this wear is much smaller. If you've ever worn the Turtles or the Samurais, you know what I'm talking about. 200 meters of water resistance, ISO certified diver, and a fantastic looking dial uh, for a dive watch in this price range. I think Seiko knocks it out of the park with this watch. And I think it looks like a great everyday wear if you're just trying to wear it around casually. You can pair it with a NATO strap, rubber strap that it comes with but seriously, a really solid watch that you can go for. Also, Strap Code, I think, has some matching bracelets to fit with this watch that I think I'm even tempted to get for myself because I think that would be a killer combo, uh, but a great everyday wearer from Seiko from the dive watch perspective. All right, guys, so now moving into the one watch collection, I think there's a lot of places that you can look. First, I'm gonna look at Tudor with the Tudor Black Bay Chrono. Now, I think this is a line that is a bit overlooked, but when looking at a value perspective of what you're getting in this watch, I think this is, a very intriguing offering from Tudor. Now, the movement inside of here, which I think is probably the most compelling thing, is actually a B01 base. Now, Tudor and Breitling exchanged a bit of technologies with their movements. Uh, so you'll find in their Super Ocean, the actual Pelagos movement uh, and their Heritage 2s. And then on the flip side, here with the Black Bay Chrono, you're gonna see a B01 uh, base inside of here. And we're talking about a fully in-house chronograph movement uh, column wheel movement inside of this watch, which I think is rather compelling when you're considering just in-house chronograph movements, uh, and especially from a brand like Breitling. And this is a very good one at that. I did a review of the Premier B01, and I talked a little bit more in depth about this movement, uh, but certainly I think a good one to go for and just checks off the boxes in a lot of areas. Getting a diver chronograph style watch that I think is, is very attractive and uses the Black Bay formula, which yes, is a bit, I think, overly popularized at times, but I think it's for good reason. It's a, it's a fantastic line to look at. Another one you can go ahead and look at is the SBGA 427. This is the Soko model. Soko is really referring to that changing of the seasons from the fall into the winter months and the frost just hitting on the trees. And I think they really did a good job with this one as well as with the 429, kind of contrasting the two different elements with the white dial and then the uh, more kind of, I would say, grayscale dial that you'll get uh, on the other end. So. Uh, what I like about this 427 version is the touch of green. I think it really pops with that white silverish dial. It's more silver in actuality, but in photos and in well-lit environments, it's gonna turn more of a true white. Uh, it's a beautiful watch. The finish is very, very, very well done. And you're of course getting a 9R65 uh, spring drive movement within, which I think if you've seen my video looking at the spring drive, I, I feel like I might have to mention it every single time I do a video on Grand Seiko, just because I think that puts all of the emphasis on what goes into the production of a spring drive movement. I think it's something that a lot of people don't truly understand, the complexity of it, the tri-synchro regulator, what it took in terms of R&D to develop it. I mean, it took three decades to really get that uh, movement to completion to where it finally was able to go to market. So if you've not seen that video, I'll check it out down below. But this is one of the cooler releases of 2020 and falls right at 5,000 bucks. And then finally, I think under $5,000 as well, Omega all day, every day of the week, whether it's the Aquaterra, the Seamaster, Diver 300s, there's safe choices to go for if you're looking at a great everyday watch in this catalog. I don't want to say really anything more. They're just no-brainers, safe choices, but uh, I think very good ones at that. Okay, so now looking at the hipster category, so looking at more micro brands here. Now, to start us off, I wanna look at the Baltic Aquascaf 
GMT. So this is a new lineup released by Baltic and is higher in price compared to what you'll find with many other Baltics. I think this one just builds off of that foundation and probably is the most attractive of all the pieces yet. And I think from a value standpoint, it's still in a good range. It's starting to get up there for a Baltic. And when you compare it to things that are just north of it, like a, a Formax or a Manta, for example, I don't think it's quite to that tier, but in terms of a styling point of view, it's very mass market in terms of its appeal and considering the love for uh, different bicolor bezels on GMTs, uh, this is gonna certainly be, I think, a, a good seller for Baltic. And I'm actually working on a review right now of this watch because hey, I thought it was really cool and I think it falls in the market and, and need in the market for where I think a lot of people are looking. Next, I wanna look at the Formax Essence 39. And I think that is the important thing, the 39. I think for a long time, looking at 43 millimeters on the original Formax Essence, from a finishing standpoint, it's a superb watch. If you've ever handled a Formax, in person, the bracelet is, I think, the best that you're gonna find for 12, 1300 bucks out there. And then with the case suspension system, which is unique, I think part of it is a bit gimmicky at times, but it is actually a useful feature when you are bending your wrist and allowing a little bit of extension and comfort when you are kind of wearing it. But the 39 millimeter case factored in with the new logo, the two things I think people mentioned all the time with Formax was the logo as well as the large case size. Both of those go away. The new logo looks great on the Essence and the 39 millimeter case is very wearable. I would probably recommend it for people up to around a seven inch wrist and below. It really comes down to, again, personal preference, but for me, it is an absolute knockout for six and a quarter inch wrist. It looks great on me. Really love the wearability. And you're also getting a chronometer movement within, certified, running like a top. So there's a lot to like with this watch. Now, next we have the Mito Decompression Timer. Now, this is not a micro brand by any means, but I think in terms of what it's going for, being a bit of a different outcast in terms of traditional design uh, and kind of pulling from the archive of Mito, I think it will be right in the wheelhouse of somebody that is of this uh, style of collector. $1,250, case size 40.5 millimeters, nice lengthy power reserve on this, 200 meters of water resistance, but that decompression timer on the actual dial and it's just an array of different colors. It's simply funky and it also comes in a traditional case size that you'd find with their, uh, or their Ocean Star Tributes, which will allow this thing to wear really solid on the wrist. So if you ever won the Ocean Star Tribute, this will be right there in terms of what to expect. All right, so now we have our Diver Fanatic. And to start us off, I wanna go for the Oris Aquas, we did just receive the release of the Caliber 400, which is going to elevate the price quite a bit. Uh, so I just wanna go for the traditional Sleda version and the 39.5 millimeter case variant. I think for the Aquas and where it falls in price, if you're going for a mass market appeal style dive watch, it's just a really solid one to go for. Finishing is really good. You're getting a very reliable time-tested movement within. I think there's just a lot to like with the Aquas. You are getting an integrated bracelet. The bracelet is good. I would have no a desire to ever be swapping it out or anything else. So the integrated style and lack of third-party options out there, really not gonna be felt if you just wear this thing true on its bracelet. Fantastic piece, ceramic bezel, great everyday wear. If you go for this version as well as the uh, larger case options, there'll be something for you. And I think it's a great dive watch you can get for around 2000 bucks. Now for another watch to look at, I'm gonna look at Christopher Ward here. And I mentioned, I think in, it may have been the previous video or sometime recently I talked about if you wanna talk about cutting out a middleman, I think Christopher Ward is the brand to do it. Uh, they go ahead, produce all their watches in their factory in Switzerland. They bought a movement manufacturer uh, and they only sell it on their website. So that is cutting out the middleman if I've ever seen it. Uh, so they're definitely a brand in terms of value perspective, I think does a very good job. I know there's some people that have some reservations in terms of the logo design and some of their styles, but uh, if you just look at the watch from the, the, the spec sheet alone, uh, which I know that's not what watches are all about, uh, but they do a very good job across the board and producing some pretty daring and fun styles. Their Trident series are very well done. Their GMT 600 that we're gonna be looking at here, I think provides something a bit, bit different in the marketplace. You're getting 600 meters of water resistance, reliable Salita caliber within, wearable case. This is the 40 millimeter option, reasonable thickness on this one at 13 and around a half millimeters in thickness and a nice lug to lug of 47.46 millimeters. Gonna wear pretty true to that 40 millimeter size. And for price, it's gonna kinda depend where you're at in the world. The exchange rate right now is all over the place, uh, but typically can be found for pretty good value for money. And then to round us out for more of a, I'd say beater style watch and a, a real classic with the Seiko SNJ025. 
Now, this is also known as the Seiko, worn famously by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And as you would expect, if you've ever seen Arnold Schwarzenegger lift any of his weights back in the day, uh, you know that this is going to be a large watch for a large man. And that's certainly what you're getting here with the case size of 47.8 millimeters, hefty on the wrist with its thickness. It is a solar powered quartz and it's gonna have that digital analog display. It's ISO 6425 certified and really just does scream 1980s and will play into the nostalgia of people from that era for sure. Now moving into our perfect duo, going to start here with Zinn, looking at our more sports oriented watch and I would say more tool watch in this perspective, uh, looking at the EZM 13. Now this to me is really where you started getting into, I think the Zinn ethos. This is really just kind of over manufacturing and kind of really watches as tools uh, in terms of construction. 41 millimeter case, 47 millimeter lug to lug, but a sizable 15 millimeters in its thickness. But that is happening as a byproduct of that 500 meters of water resistance. This is also a chronograph as well, and it's gonna be highly modified. So it's a highly modified Valju 7750, which is actually gonna have the standard 30 minute counter that's gonna come with the Valju 7750, change that to a 60 minute. And also to stay true to that tool watch approach, the pushers on this can actually be used and engaged underwater, which is very cool and is usually the big no-no in terms of chronographs and engaging underwater. So Zinn has done a very good job with this. And 500 meters for a chronograph, non-screw down pushers is pretty insane. And then for our dress watch, this watch I think could be worn in a dressy scenario, but also in a casual scenario, depending on the strap. And that is the Heritage Classic from Longines with their sector dial. Now this was easily one of my favorite watches that I reviewed in 2020. Love this watch. I think this is one of the cleanest uh, approaches to a sector dial. And I think looking at Longines, they do, this heritage reissue stuff so freaking well. Uh, and this was a great example of them just knocking it out of the park. Very wearable case, 38.5 millimeters in terms of its case size, wearable lug to lug. It is a bit large when you're factoring in the lug to lug distance for the most part. If you're thinking about it from a dress perspective, it does have, in terms of its case architecture, more of an everyday style approach, but the dial is very classic, very just early 20th century. When you look at those classic sector dials of like the 1930s and 1940s, this really does a fantastic job. And the symmetry on this piece with the lack of a date, I think is just so wonderful of how they got this done. I, mean, I prefer this compared to sector dials that are multiples of the price. Uh, it's, it's a great watch for 2000 bucks. And I think for the right person, especially when you're pairing it with this EZM 13 from Zen, I think is suitable for being a dress watch, no question. And will also cover you in those more casual scenarios. All right, so now looking at our formal collector, and I wanted to take a different approach on this one compared to what I've done in the past. Kind of looking at the same, just three hand style dress watches, looking at three of them or two of them in some instances, I wanted to go for kind of a different breakdown. One being more of a chronograph, one being more of a traditional dress watch and the other being more of a say casual style dress watch that could be worn in a variety of different scenarios. First, starting with the chronograph, again, just on the subject of long jeans, another great example of everything that I already mentioned with this other Heritage Classic with their Heritage Classic chronograph 1946. Price on this one, around $3,000. So this is going to take up the majority of our price bracket. But the style of this piece, fantastic. Really solid wearability. Those Arabic numerals that really screen the 1920s, 1930s. A simple horizontal display of sub-registers. Leaf style blued hands that really contrast with the white silver dial. And for the lack of a better term, probably more of a dress style chronograph. Uh, just given that it is, I think, more appropriate for a variety of different scenarios and definitely doesn't appeal to the sportier end of the chronograph spectrum. Next, we have the Tissot Chemin de Toral. This is the Powermatic 80 GMT. So basically taking the format of the traditional three-hand model, adding the GMT function, which under $1,000 to get that from a reliable and well-known manufacturer like Tissot, I think is a great place to look. 42 millimeters with the case, so it is going to be a little bit larger. Nice thickness though of 12.5 millimeters considering the added complication, 50 meters of water resistance and a sapphire crystal. But when contrasting the added benefit of the GMT and certainly looking the part in terms of a dress watch, I think this is a nice one to go for. Now to round it out, I wanna look at an everyday option. I know this, in terms of this lineup of formal watches is probably leaning a little bit more casual than I would have in the past with others, but I wanna just be different compared to the other collection videos that I've done. And I wanna do the Sark 045, 047 family, typically being the models to look for. I own the 045, I've done a couple of reviews on the channel, absolutely love the watch. 
Uh, it, it's a great, just I say everyday wear, but could be dressed up. It's kind of a bit of an enigma in a way, just because it really can't make up its mind on what it's trying to be. It has elements that certainly appear more dressy, no loom on the dial, very clean sword style hands, dolphin style hands at the center. You're getting a, almost a tapestry style dial in a way. But then on the outside of the case, you have that onyx crown, you have the crown guard. So it's, it's a bit kind of walking that happy medium in terms of uh, casual versus also going into the dress world. But I think it's appropriate for a lot of people out there. 100 meters of water resistance, pretty wearable case, but definitely on the larger end of things when considering the other options available in the range from say like the Sard family uh, as an example there. Uh, but you can also go for the 047, which is gonna have more of a green hue to the dial compared to the 045, which is, is gonna be more blue. But these JDM Sarks models certainly have been, I think, overlooked for quite some time, but it seems like they're finally getting their due a bit more now. And all right, guys, now we're at our final persona with the three watch collection, looking at an everyday dress style watch, as well as a sports style watch. Now, starting out with the everyday category, this is a fantastic watch that so many people, I don't think just consider or even maybe even know exists. And it's from Mueller Glassuta with their Panova Blue. There's also a green dial variant, but I think the blue is a bit more to my liking. $999, 40 millimeter case, 47.5 millimeter lug to lug. And then you're also getting an automatic Salita SW200, but it is a modified SW200 being deconstructed and reconstructed with Mula's proprietary woodpecker neck regulator system, helping with shock and helping fine tune the movement for accuracy. It's gonna be highly regulated, 100 meters of water resistance, great wearability, fun splash in the colors, German made from a fantastic manufacturer with great history back to the 1800s with production of marine chronometers as well as motorcycle speedometers for the likes of BMW. This is a great brand, often overlooked, uh, and a huge fan of this one. Now moving into the dress category, I wanted something a bit different. I think it is getting more into the casual realm, but one of the coolest executions of a moon phase in the price range with the Trainmaster moon phase. Now Ball is a brand that I think has some cool connection to me. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. This brand has a lot of its roots from Cleveland, Ohio, now being located in Switzerland for much of their watch production. $1,500 in terms of the price, nice wearable case of 40 millimeters, gonna be thicker given the fact that you are getting a moon phase complication in here, automatic at a caliber within, they're at a 2836, and then water resistance of 50 meters with the sapphire crystal. But the upside of this one is just the fantastic look of this one when you're lighting up that moon phase. Ball is really known for a lot of their use of tritium, their railway style watches, and tritium being a material that is going to emit constant luminescence without having to be charged. I think marries well with this style of a moon phase, and it just looks spectacular with the lights on, lights off. Uh, it's, it's a style that's not gonna be for everybody. I think Ball is kind of a love it or hate it style brand, but from a value standpoint, I think are certainly uh, producing some fantastic watches for the money. And then to round it out here, going to look at Zodiac with their Super Seawolf 53. Now the problem with Zodiac, commonly is the fact that they're producing all these sweet watches, but they just sell out all the time. They never have anything in stock, which is unfortunate, but when they are in stock, they usually have some great stuff. And I think from this $1,500 price point, which they usually occupy, uh, they're doing some, I think, very different and compelling things. Now the Zodiac Seawolf is one of the more important dive watches of the 1950s and just the commercialization of dive watches overall and strapping it to many people's wrists out there. It was one of the first available commercial dive watches on the market uh, for the mass market. And I think from its design perspective has certainly inspired a lot of other brands out there. It's now currently underneath the Fossil Group in terms of its control, but they're doing a very good job of, I think, starting to tell those important stories of Zodiac and what the brand meant in the early stages in the 1950s, as well in the Vietnam War, as many of the watches were available at PX's, uh, their aerospace GMTs, as well as the Seawolves, some of the best looking, I think, vintage dive watches out there. This one comes with a nice wearability, 49 millimeter lug to lug, case size of 40 millimeters, gonna wear pretty true there. I actually have a uh, review on this uh, timepiece here. Uh, Automatics STP313 is basically the comparative movement to the Salita SW200 or the ETA 2824, and is the movement manufacturer owned by the Fossil Group. 200 meters of water resistance. And of all of the dive wash brands that do the splash of color well, I think Zodiac along with Doxa, I think do it maybe the best of all the brands out there. But all right, guys, that is building a watch collection for 5,000 bucks, seven different paths that you can take. Of course, plenty of different options out there, endless options out there, and I think that's what makes this all fun at the end of the day. But leave comments down below. How would you build a $5,000 watch collection? What would you purchase with your money of $5,000? In addition, definitely take advantage of that giveaway. Uh, fill out the form down below, head over to the site, teddyballlessar.com, pick out the five watches that you would select 
to build your perfect $5,000 watch collection and we'll select a winner at random where you could pick one of your five watches uh, to add to your collection and we'll give it to you for free. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. That should be a lot of fun. Wanted to give back and I think it'd be a fun way to uh, kind of make this more of a game here as we're kind of building collections together. Also, if you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. If you do want me to continue this series, uh, that's a great indicator for me as we continue going with this. Also follow us on Instagram at Teddy Balasar. Stay up to date with the content. Also see some cool photos of watches. Gonna be doing a giveaway there for Instagram followers. So definitely stay up to date and uh, be sure to be following. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.